So this is really interesting. Uh, and I've been wanting to talk about GMOs. And as you guys know, I say this on the show often, I am not a scientist. And I do sometimes muck up some of the science stuff. So I want to clean up some GMO stuff. And I just watched Food Inc. So I'm on a big kick with all this stuff. <laughs> uh, so natural food blogs are freaking out uh, because there is some news that cows may soon be forced to feed on uh, GMO or genetically modified grass. Uh, so first off, let's just get the definition of what a GMO is. Now I had a, actually a little trouble finding a clear definition of this because it's so polarizing that every bit of information you get on it, either is people that are completely against it or people that are completely for it. So the information that we're going, and we can throw to it now, what are GMOs? And this is from the non-GMO project, okay? <laughs> so unbiased so, reporting uh, here. <laughs> so I, I think this is basically gonna be somewhat unbiased. Even though it's a non-GMO, but Kara can clean it up after. So GMOs, or genetically modified organisms, are plants or animals that have been genetically engineered with DNA from bacteria, viruses, or other plants and animals. These experimental combinations of genes from different species cannot occur in nature or in traditional crossbreeding. So virtually all commercial GMOs are engineered to withstand direct application of herbicide and or to produce an insecticide. Despite biotech industry promises, none of the GMO traits currently on the market offer increased yield, drought tolerance, enhanced nutrition, or any other consumer benefit. Uh, and a growing body of evidence connects GMOs with health, health problems, environmental damage, and violation of farmers and consumers' rights. Okay, so. Now, Kara, I know you're pro-GMO, so I think you're gonna have an issue with that last part, at least. But basically, was the definition, did we get a clear definition of what GMOs are? And this has been going on forever, mm. where farmers try to make better crops, yes. right? No, no, I so, mean, we're probably talking about agriculture scientists at this point, not like backyard farmers, but yeah. no. Like, so much of that was wrong and okay. really biased and not based on okay, science. Okay, so that was from the non-GMO exactly. project. Exactly, like, so that's now, why. It's okay. obviously very biased. Great, and that's why I want to do this, because I know you're feelings on this, so I, I threw that out there, so yes. that's, that's half of it. Give me the other half. First things first, let's differentiate between genetically modified and transgenic. I do think that most people now, when they use the term GMO, they are talking about transgenic organisms. Genetic modification just means that you're manipulating the genome of an organism. There's lots of ways to do it. You can do it through breeding, through different types of domestication. But yes, yeah. I think that tangible- wait, can we just quickly explain why, the reason that farmers do that is because they want things that will oh. last longer, Well, right, I mean, everybody, like, from the beginning of agriculture, right. we've been breeding, like, oh, that tomato's bigger, that tomato's bigger, let's cross them, we want the bigger tomato. Like, that's Technically, that is genetic modification. Right. Everything we eat right now has been genetically modified, but I'll concede that what we're probably talking about when we use the label GMO is transgenics, which means manipulating the genome with uh, specific chemicals and altering it in such a way to get a specific result. Now, advocates of GMO research, which is almost all scientists, yeah. um, they will tell you that it's better to manipulate a single gene to get a single outcome than, not better, but it's it's more controlled than when we use kind of standard practice, which is just uh, crossbreeding. You're shuffling around thousands of genes. The concern that a lot of people have is this would never occur in nature. Yeah. This would never, well, first of all, that's a really difficult claim to make. There are a lot of things in this situation that could occur in nature. There are some things that couldn't occur in nature, but, I have a huge problem with people that argue that because something is non-natural, it's somehow unhealthy or dangerous. Right, so to that point, we also did a story a couple weeks ago how when you buy things, the packaging on all your food and all that stuff, when they say all natural, it actually literally means nothing in the it United States. It literally the phrase, means nothing. The phrase all natural it's means nothing. It's unnatural to br to brush your teeth. <laughs> it's unnatural to fix a cleft palate. Right. It's, you know, all of these things are unnatural, but that does not mean that they are somehow better or worse. That's just an absolutely moot point. It's a, it's a, it's a straw man argument. Okay, so we got the non-GMO people, we got the Cara Santa Maria people. But there's a lot more no, I can there, comment yeah, on more. before, yeah, there, we'll, we'll get more. there. I have a question, you seem to be very well informed. Like, how much do we know about the potential consequences of GMO? Do we know that they are safe, in other words? Because that's the argument that I see most of the time. It's like, well, we just don't have enough information, but do we have enough I information guess, to I guess make? it depends on where your threshold is. I'm gonna be right. completely honest. It depends on where your threshold is, but that last, you Know, paragraph that you read off of there about yeah. there's evidence to show that they are increasingly dangerous, blah, blah, blah. That's bullshit. Like, it's straight up propaganda that's not based in any legitimate science. So, there's no there science are, that, that somehow superbugs are coming because they're getting, because the plants are more resistant. Superbugs come from antibiotic yeah. resistance. Yeah. So, that's a whole different issue. Okay. So, here, here's the thing there has not been one repeatable legitimate study that shows any risk to health or um, human safety. Not one. Yeah. Not 
one. So when people claim that, they're straight up, they're perpetuating a myth. And that's a very important point, hands down, to make.